do you ever want to just, is there anything I can do to stop this wall or this hunger fast that my ball python is going through? Um, Cody's good. She's nice and thick. She's not going through anything. And I'm using her during this video to basically discuss an option that you can have, of course, with some advice from a veterinarian. I would definitely not ask that you do that, but this might be something that could help your ball pythons break that anorexic fast. Hey, how's it going, guys? It's Paul with Spheric Reptiles, and I brought Cody with me. She is an adult female, normal ball python. You can see she's really huge. Um, she's over 3,500 grams. She's thick all over. Um, she gets fed once a month. One medium-sized rat once a month, and she can maintain her body composition and her size. And you're watching this video, and you're not watching it to hear about how snakes actually are eating, because that's not an issue. But Something that we come across now that we're dealing with more people with ball pythons, um, selling ball pythons to people, is people come into keeping ball pythons already expecting their ball python at any stage to just stop eating. And I think that's really unfair to the ball python and it's really unfair to the keeper because when I ask them more questions, they really don't know which route to go. So the purpose of this video is to share with you a study that I just completed with Fendabendazole. It's a commercially available safe product made by Merck. Um, I think the trade name is Safeguard. Um, it comes in a 10% suspension that's normally used for uh, treating goats of nematodes or anything from like hookworms, roundworms, pinworms, giardia, and did I say whipworms? All right, so worms basically. And one of the key things that we got to remember is how the mechanism of action of this drug works. And of course, consult your veterinarian before you go into this. But normally what we see in our ball pythons is they're going along, they're going along and they're going along. And so I'm talking about not hatchlings, not even um, juveniles, but I'm talking about those subadults and those adults. They're about a, a year to a year and a half, maybe older. And then all of a sudden they just stop eating. They go on this anorexic fast. And this is a normally otherwise healthy ball python. And you're stuck in a dilemma. You're stuck in a pickle. You're just kind of wondering, you know, what's going on. So of course you're going to check your husbandry. Um, you're going to make sure that your temperatures or your basking spots at 88 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. You're going to check your humidity levels and you're going to want to hit 50 to 70%. You can do that with misting or you can plant plants in their enclosure, it just depends. We have tubs, so what I do is I just mist them down twice a week with their substrate, making sure it's not overly saturated. And I put a large water dish in there so that they can make, I can make sure that they have those humidity levels. Another thing that you'll wanna check, I mean, this is before you think about doing anything, is that they have clean water, that the substrate is clean, and you might want to reduce the prey item size or just switch to another prey item altogether. So if you're feeding frozen thaw, you might want to consider live. I mean, you might want to consider it. Or if you're feeding a rat, you might want to consider uh, a mouse. Or if you have the access to a African soft food, you might want to try that option as well. And that gives you some different possibilities to end that fast in this adult animal or this sub-adult animal. And if all else fails, then this is one thing that you could possibly do. Um, and I failed to mention, you might definitely check your animals for mites. Now here at Spheric Reptiles, we do a preventative treatment right after breeding season. So around like August, July, we treat every animal for mites, right? We put them all on paper. We treat everything for mites just as a preventative treatment. And we use reptile spray that you can get from Chewy.com. I'm not sponsored by Chewy, but that's one place you can get it. We buy about a gallon because it lasts a long time. So we bought one gallon like two years ago and it's still lasting. Uh, but getting on to the information, I feel like this is something that can help everybody. I've spoken to several breeders, most of them large breeders, because I wanted to see what the scale of this could be. And also some small, smaller breeders like ourselves that have, you know, a hundred animals or less. Uh, so we could get a really good picture as to what we can expect with using the fendabendazole 10% suspension to help 
break this fast or break this hunger strike anorexic moment, whatever you call it. I'm going to tell you a little bit about fenobenazole because you may not have heard about this. Um, fenobenazole has been around for a while. It's really safe. Um, generally speaking, right? It comes in a lot of different formulations. They use it in livestock. Uh, of course, they use it in goats. So it's just the suspension form is what you can dose your ball pythons with. You really can't give them pellets. So having this drug in a suspension form at 10% per ml, right? So is going to be advantageous for your animal because of two things. First, if anything's been studied in livestock, it's generally safe. Whereas fenobendazole has an LD50, which is lethal dose of 50% at, at a very, very high level. I mean, it would take a lot. When you dose it 0.1 mLs per 100 grams of the snake's body weight will be excreted in the feces, mostly unchanged. So the only thing that it does is it really, its mechanism of action is that it stops the glucose uptake from the worms. So the hookworms, the roundworms, the pinworms, the giardia, the, uh, I'm missing one more worm. Um, hook, round, pin, whip, giardia. All right, so it, it prevents that glucose uptake in these worms. I did that on purpose, guys. And what that does is it stops ATP production in the worm. So it stops their ability to make energy. So it also stops all cellular function. So it, in a sense, it paralyzes or immobilizes that worm. And ultimately it causes cell death for this worm so that the worm dies. And this worm, after it dies, it sloughs off of the intestinal, wherever it's at in the um, gastrointestinal tract of your animal. And it's, basically pooped out and it poops out and it's dead. So it's like PC should be uh, no worms present, right? So that's one of the good things about using fendobendazole is that it covers, it has a broad spectrum. If you're thinking about something that kills things that you don't want, it has a broad spectrum of killing and the ability to kill nematodes so that, and it still does not harm your animal. And I think that's one of the reasons why I wanted to move forward first because of safety and then efficacy. So the study was set up as I look at Cody. I mean, I really do, I really do love my animals, but the study was a randomized control trial. And what that means is that I basically took the 15 animals that I looked at because I didn't want to test it in every animal in case I got an adverse event, but I took their, their names and put them on a piece of paper and they were all the same size. I put them in a hat and I randomly withdrew them. So 12 of these 15 animals went into the active group that received the fendobendazole, and three of the animals went into the control group, which received basically 0.1 mLs of their body weight of water. Because I wanted to make sure that every animal had um, the stress of being dosed, just to get a fair balance of it. Um, so that was one of the reasons why I did it. But also, this was a three-week study, and at any point in the study that an animal ate or an animal consumed a prey item, they were discontinued from the fendobendazole treatment or the placebo or water treatment. Because the whole point of this is to stop the animal from having this anorexic fast or this hunger strike. So in doing so, I was able to calculate some things. And you might be wondering, did I do a fecal sample? And no, I did not because these animals, they had been fasting or going through this hunger strike for at least three weeks, but the median time was 10 weeks. So there were some that were past 10 weeks and there were some that were before 10 weeks. But again, with the small um, animal population size that we use of just 15, it was really hard to get um, a range of animals. I just picked the animals that were fasting and I randomized them and I withdrew them. I drew the names out of a hat to see what they would be dosed with. So since I had never noticed any worms in their feces, you might be wondering, well, why would you choose fendobendazole? Well, I chose this after doing some research on just causes of animals not eating. So one of the things that's out there, and I have the study, if you're interested in the study, just send me an email to info at sphericreptiles.com and I will send you a copy of the study for free. Um, but when we look at 
any animal that consumes meat, right? So we got to assume that snakes consume meat because they eat rats and they eat mice or just rodents. Um, that there's always a risk of a parasite living in that rodent. And if that snake ingests that rodent, then the snake actually ingests the worms as well. So my thought is, since we don't breed our own rodents, that we buy these commercially available rodents, which we want to trust where they come from, but we really don't know, right? So whether you buy them from a pet store, you buy them from a rodent breeder, you really don't know. So this was one of the things that I wanted to just be able to check off the box as to a possible reason as to why. And when I looked at the safety profile, I just thought as a preventative, it wouldn't hurt. So that's why I moved forward with the study just in case you're asking. All right, all right, so getting into the study. So all the animals were dosed at 0.1 ml. So I've got a uh, one milliliter syringe and they were dosed 0.1 mLs per 100 grams of body mass. Now these snakes are pretty big. So some of them got like, you know, 1.8 mLs of fendobendazole per one week treatment. And again, they did not get treated every day. They got treated once a week. And here are the results. Fendibendazole, like at the 10% suspension, showed greater efficacy, which means that it worked within the first dose on the first week. So we offered the prey items to the animals for, within 48 hours for a frozen thawed option. And then if they did not feed, I offered them within 48 more hours a live prey option. So it generally works. So I dosed them with the fendibendazole and saying fendibendazole a thousand times, you know, but I dosed them with their medication. Then I offered them a frozen thaw prey item in two days. And then if they didn't eat at that point, two days later, I offered them a live prey item. And it was always an item that was smaller than what we had been charting previously to their fast. So that we wanted to make sure that they had every opportunity to eat a meal. Um, because with snakes, the bigger it is, especially with ball pythons, the more likely it is that they will be fearful of it. And I wanted to exclude that. So that's one of the things that we did. Out of all of them, 50% of the active group or six out of 12 of the animals consumed a prey item after just the first dose. So within 48 hours or 96 hours, they either consumed a frozen thawed animal or they consumed a live animal four days later after that initial dose. Now, what's interesting is that you would think that this will carry on with the other six, but it did not. So that's one of the things that I noticed with the uh, active group is that if they didn't eat after that first dose, they didn't eat any more of the prey items that were offered for the duration of the other two weeks, so week two and three. Now, I did see that two of those remaining six animals did consume a prey item at week four and week five. This was all after the study concluded, but since that wasn't you know, how the study was geared, it's, it's really hard for me to report that but I did see that they are eating. And what I mean by eating is that these animals attack the food, like they really did. And that was something that I did not expect, but I didn't even record it because it wasn't something that I set up the study to record, but they attacked the food immediately when it was offered to them. So you're wondering about the control group. Well, one in three or 33% consumed the prey item with just a placebo or water um, within the first week and, and the second week, a second one did. So about 66% or two and three of those animals consumed a prey item. Now, I still didn't see any feces because these animals had been fasting for so long that their digestive systems were completely cleaned out. So for me to see feces, I would have had to get it before they actually went on fast, which is hard to do. So I didn't see any feces yet. I'm still waiting to see that. Um, by the time you see this video, I might see some and I will examine it. If the Fendibendazole kills the worms, then I might not be able to see them anyway. They might have been digested or broken down or something like that. But I will look to see in each one of the study animals, whether it's a control group or an active group, to see if there are some worms there. But definitely interesting to see that 50% of the animals in the active group, when given Fendibendazole, according to their body weight, consumed a prey item within the first dose. And I think that's really big. But even subsequently, I guess this would be analysis after the fact, the post analysis, um, two, two of those animals out of the remaining six consumed a prey item. So for the secondary endpoint, we tracked weight gains and losses from either our active group or the control group. And I think this is the one, this is the part, other than them just eating, we know that if animals eat, they gain weight, right? 
But to see and to track this percentage of weight increase was phenomenal. Just, I mean, whether it's by chance or it's not, it's still something that I feel could be of great benefit to anyone who is considering this as an option to get their ball pythons off of the hunger strike and away from that wall of not eating. So in the fenobenazole treated active group that consumed a prey item, it's important I say that, they had an increase of their body weight of 5.04% from the baseline weight. Um, and versus the ones who did not eat over the three weeks, they lost 1.04% of their body weight. Now you might be wondering, why didn't they lose more? Well, as these animals eat less and less, their metabolic activity slows down as well so that they're not using as much energy and they're not losing as much weight. If you think about it, the way cellular respiration works is the more you move, the more energy you'll burn, the more oxygen your cells will need, the more CO2 they'll need, the more food you'll need, energy, all this other stuff. ATP, which is what fendobendazole, it kills that in the nematodes or the worms. But when it comes to ball pythons, when they don't eat, they really stop moving a lot. They really conserve energy, so it slows their metabolic rate all the way down to almost nothing. So even after 10 weeks of fasting, hey, the animal's still healthy. It's still healthy. So that's one of the things that I want to also fair balance this with is that even if you don't choose to go this route, your animal still should be healthy if you're doing all those other things correctly and you don't have mites and you notice that you don't have a respiratory infection and things like that, which all of these animals are healthy otherwise. So what about the control group? I think that's interesting. It was only three animals, but if we look at the control group, which received their equivalent body weight in water, I mean, the 0.1 mLs per 100 grams of their body weight in just, just water. Um, the ones that consumed the prey item, they gained 3% over their baseline body weight, and the one animal that did not lost 3%. So I don't know if the water sped up the metabolic rate or not, but that's just what happened. In conclusion, Cody, how am I doing here on time? Am I doing okay? Is this a good study? Oh, you don't need it because you eat. Okay. So in conclusion, fenobendazole does show that at the 10% suspension, those 0.1 mLs per 100 grams, that it's, it works at stopping your ball python's hunger strike and getting them back on food. Now, it only works for 50% of the animals, but if you have 50% of your animals eating, that's like the flip of a coin. And I don't know if that's worth it for you to try, but at least this is information that's out there that gives you the ability to make another decision. Um, Fenobendazole is known as a safe product that's excreted relatively unchanged throughout the feces of any part that's not um, working on the actual worm. So I really feel like this study was a success. Of course, there's additional information that needs to be done. I'm hoping that I get some more information from other breeders or if someone, if you try this at home, if you leave a comment, um, continue to do your research. That's how I came to the conclusion to do this study to begin with. But in all guys, in all seriousness, we are the caretakers for all these animals. And at least for my part, I want to do everything that I possibly can to make sure that they are living their best life. Um, they live in these tubs, but I bust my, my tail to make sure that I get them out and either hold them or give them some other enrichment activity. We got nets that we set up with play, like jungle gym things in it, just to increase their ability to move around and just stay active and in shape. So I challenge you to do the same thing. And it's all part of enjoying the time that you spend with your reptiles, just like Cody, right? I mean, these are amazing and beautiful animals and uh, definitely enjoy it and cherish that time that you have with your family. And I hope this study helps. Thank you.